Hi there, you are going to join me and my two friends, Jen and Kim, as we go to the Goodwill near Jen's house. I first spotted this dog. I thought it was very sweet because it looked like some kind of art pottery. It wasn't signed on the bottom. It might be made in China and be a contemporary piece, but I really like the looks of the dog. And then I saw this vase that was marked made in China. Again. <laughs> These ladies would just hold kept the crowding. Dog with you. <laughs> told them that I was filming their feet so I could tell you these two ladies wouldn't leave me alone but it's just them giggling at me as I look at this vintage decanter with the original cork stopper it is so cool looking I'm definitely going to list this one in the shop and then Jen found this <laughs> you want to show it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. oh is it a bird it's a toucan that's me oh, it's a toucan yeah didn't you say chicken? <laughs> you said chicken. No, I said toucan, didn't I? No, you said chicken. I'm pretty sure I just said toucan. I wanted if you Did said she it. Did she say chicken? No, she said toucan. <laughs> Why are you chicken? We had chicken for lunch. It's cute though. No, you cute. cute. She said. And then when I saw this Georgia mug, I decided to get this. I've sold this mug before. I've sold the uh, Michigan version of this mug. It's very, very large and very heavy, but I thought I'd give it a chance. On an end cap, they had this covered casserole dish. I think it was marked France, I think. But this is a big, heavy piece, so I decided not to take it. But the piece underneath it grabbed my attention because I felt it was a uh, holder for a casserole dish, like a Pyrex or a Fire King dish. But I thought it definitely had age, but and it was only $1.99. But I didn't want to get it and then not have anything that it would fit into. Or maybe it wasn't old, it just looked old, so I left that there. I thought this was a Jim Shore piece, but unfortunately the cow was missing his ear and a horn, and it wasn't marked Jim Shore after all. But it definitely had that look of Jim Shore. And then I found on, the now we're in the yellow section, then I found this diamond point decanter. It might have, I think it would probably most likely had a stopper to it, but it was missing the stopper. And then I thought at first this was here the last time I was here, but I think I've seen this style of um, tray before, and the tray I saw before had a lot of damage to it, and this has damage to it. You can see the black mark there. So I wonder if the material that this is made out of, unfortunately, uh, shows damage very quickly. Obviously an older piece, but with the damage I just didn't feel right selling it and then we have moved on i think to maybe the blue section i'm not sure that's a very small goodwill so there's not a lot of hard goods but they do they do have a lot of nice things here i was seeing if there was a brand name on these pieces but they were all unmarked but you could get the whole box i think for twenty dollars and then i found this wooden carved tiki figurine which i thought was pretty cool <laughs> My mother in law has so much belief, but I guess it would oh, be really? white with the It's white with the flower. Yeah, and it would say belief, not made in China on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no, because those would have like the <coughs> hanger for your. Maybe it could hold your plastic bags. I don't know. The whole thing is. We were trying to figure out what that bunny was for, and I think we ultimately thought that it held plastic bags or. Your clothespins. We still weren't sure. There was a whole bunch of Christmas cookie jars. I flipped this one over to see who made that Christmas uh, cookie jar. And then there was a whole bunch of Santas. And then this one, I was wondering who made this one. And I finally figured it out after I focused on it that it was made in China. I wanted to see if these were vintage because they had the look to it. Um, the ring, the rubber rings were very old. And once I finally got them out of the bag, the the names felt like decals to me so i still wasn't sure if they were vintage or if someone made them recently i thought this was a really cool mug but unfortunately there was a chip to the dolphin's fin on the handle there so i left that there this stoneware mixing bowl grabbed my attention with the sponge paint uh, rim and handle and then this i thought was really neat it had a lot of damage on it it looked like the damage it came that way i don't think it it occurred on the shelf so I was a little surprised that that was put out on the shelf it had a neat design to it though and then I always check out the bags and then I thought this was funny because some of the back the bears in his bag were marked Jubilee and that is a close to this stores um, another thrift store so 
I thought that was a little unusual that they bought them at Jubilee and then just gathered up some other ones and then donated all the bears to this Goodwill. I thought this was really neat. This was a Dragonware um, Moriage design. It was a souvenir from Niagara Falls. I thought that was very sweet but very specific, so I did leave that there. I do like picking up Dragonware, but because it was a souvenir piece, I left that there. When I was shopping with Jocelyn recently, I did find these new in the box with the poinsettias on it, and here was just one. I didn't know that they came with Christmas uh, designs, so it was interesting seeing a, another Christmas design. I did pick up these placemats. They're laminated. I feel that they do have some age to them uh, based on the back. The design on the back reminded me of like 80s, 90s, and I used to live in Arizona, and I thought the Saguaro cactuses, someone might like that look. They're in really good shape. They do have some surface wear, but overall, some uh, really nice placemats. Kim and I both saw these Made in Japan plates, but it unfortunately, it only had one shaker. I know some of you have said um, some people only use one shaker, but I tend to not really pick up that style of plate anymore. Then I saw these coasters, and at first I was like, Nevis, Wisconsin. Wait a minute, that's not Wisconsin. W period I. So then the three of us <laughs> put our heads together, and we finally figured it out that it was Nevis, West Indies. And then there was another bag of some other coasters. And let's see what else. Oh, then I found these salt and pepper shakers with that were made to look like sheep. I thought they kind of look like little balls of yarn. They don't have their stoppers, but I think they're super cute, smiling up at you. And with Easter coming, I thought that was a good idea. Mount Vernon fine porcelain. Oh my gosh, these are fat pigs. Those are funny. Now flip them over. Well, let me see the bottom. Not flip them over, I meant that. <laughs> You're so silly. Look, there's like, look, there's Martha and George Washington and then a cow with glasses on. I have known these ladies a very long time. I was a teacher at one point to some of their kids. So it was a lot of fun shopping with them at Goodwill. That looked like it was a cherished teddy inside that styrofoam. And then I thought this piece at first was a planter, but with a big hole on the bottom. And then there was something in the front that you could have set, probably a salt and pepper shaker napkin holder set. That's what I would guess. And then I was thinking, I wonder if the same person who donated the Dragonware from Niagara Falls donated this Rocks and Minerals set from Niagara Falls. I thought that was interesting. And I was seeing who made this, uh, the Holly creamer and sugar back there, but it was Mark Made in China. And then here was a bag of milk glass. Nothing too exciting grabbed my attention, but it was a great deal though, because they bundled those three pieces for one money. And it seems like the Goodwills where I live, they're they're pricing everything separately, which is, which is a shame. This is what that ashtray looked like on the inside of it. It was in that box. And here was a Homer Laughlin casserole. It didn't have a pattern on it. It just had the gold. So I decided to leave that there. And then next to it was a very nice, this is, might be a temple jar because of the decorative. I've heard that uh, ginger jars have the plain flat top and a temple jar, I think it's called, has the decorative top to the lid. These look like spark plugs or at first, but then I realized they might be for your fuse box, maybe. Just taking a shot in the dark there. Some more salt and pepper shakers. It feels like plaster. Like saber. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's made in Portugal. That's really big. It's only $3.99. I was trying to get one of them to buy this ginormous wreath. It was huge. You can't really tell on camera here. When I put my hand up to it, look, it was huge. I didn't have any takers. I almost got this little planter. I thought this was really sweet. It did have a chip on its ear there. I like the design on it. It looked like counter cross stitch. And then a teacher mug. And then I saw this Oreo cookie jar. And Jocelyn had just picked up a cookie jar with Oreos in it. So that kind of jogged my memory a little bit. And then I thought these tiles were really cute. I really liked the cat. And I was hoping that there was another cat on the, as the second tile. But the second tile, it was a 
Nantucket basket. I thought, well, that's fine. But then I realized that there was a chip on the Nantucket tile. So I did leave those on the shelf. <laughs> Look at that. That's a fancy one. <laughs> Made in Japan. That's actually nice. I should actually get that. You We're should. You want to get it? Years in June. There you go. <laughs> she said she wasn't going to buy it at first, but I talked her into it. <laughs> I found this bag of Warren Kimball uh, America plates, and I thought they were a really good buy in price. So I put those in my cart, and I spied this thing right here on an end cap. I went to pick up the bowl, and I realized it's attached. So I thought that was really neat. I like that. And then over in the artwork, they have this really fancy, look how fancy this is. It's all plastic. And then in the Christmas section, they had this talking boot. And it was kind of funny because when I picked it up, it kind of let out a groan. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if it still worked or not. It didn't work in the store. And then I realized when it talked, it probably did this. Watch, I'm going to show you. It probably lifted up the front and sang to you. <laughs> and then over, they had a fabric section and over in the fabric section, I found some batting and I like to use that for shipping. And then we went back in the clear section one last time and I spied these parfait ice cream cups. They are Tracy Porter and I'm going to sell the four yellow ones together and probably just the odd pink one by itself. And they have a little bit of chipping, but an overall very good condition. And then I spied this plastic uh, tidbit tray and I cannot get it apart. I can get the handle off, but I cannot get it apart to get the brand name. A true friend reaches for your hand and touches your heart. Aww. Aww. <laughs> can we hold it together? <laughs> yeah, we can. We can hold it together. <laughs> Oh, Merry Christmas. There you Aww. go. That, that should be your... We should here. have all three of and our And then hands. here. Yes, here. Come hold this. Here. <laughs> here. See? Shopping with friends. <laughs> that might be that's my your, thumbnail. That's your here, that'll be my thumbnail. Come back. We have to hold <laughs> it. Crazy. Anyway. Jen spied this metal biplane clock, and I thought it was really, really cool. She had no interest in it, uh, so I decided to check it out some more and then when I saw that it was marked 1974 on the back I I really really wanted to get it and I have not tested it because I don't have a battery that fits that size but um, it is really really in great shape even with the paint loss and the last thing I found was this uh, piranha look at that how could I not coming up next is everything I picked up on this shopping trip with my friends Kim and Jen after I show everything that I picked up, I'm also going to explain my tattoo that you see sometimes on my wrist because I've gotten uh, quite a few comments if I could explain the tattoo. So stay tuned for that at the very end of this video. This is the tattoo that sometimes peeks out from underneath my jacket or sweatshirt. And this is actually Jenny's hand. It's a handprint of hers from when she was 28 days old. Jenny was born at 31 weeks. She was two pounds, seven ounces, 15 inches long. And so she was in the hospital in the NICU for 51 days. And on day 28, they did, it was Mother's Day. And so the nurses in the NICU had put their handprints and made cards for the moms. And so this was based off of her handprint. And so now Jenny teases me, I need to get a new one <laughs> to update my uh, tattoo. So that is the story behind the hand. It really is Jenny's actual hand at 28 days. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see ya.